Starting with Rust 1.19, the language comes with support for a feature called unions, and this feature would be particularly familiar to those of you who are experienced in programming in a language such as C. So unions are kind of very similar to enums, the only difference being that they are untagged. So essentially when we're talking about enums, they all have a tag which stores which variant is the correct one at runtime, whereas unions, they just get rid of this tag altogether. So let me show you what unions look like. Obviously you have to have the latest compiler installed and here is a union. So I'm going to define a union called int or float. So this union is going to be able to store either an integer value, a 32-bit integer, or a floating point value. So I can have the i defined as i32, and I can also have f defined as an f32. So essentially now I have a placeholder where I can store either an integral value or a floating point value. And nobody's really going to know which one. So unless you keep additional information somewhere about which value is actually being stored, you're not going to know. So let me show you how to actually use this union. So I'll make a main function and from this I'll call a function called unions. That's going to be our uh, demonstration here. So what I'm going to do is make a function called unions and then we'll actually uh, learn how to use this union that we've just created. So first of all here is the creation process. So if I want a mutable union uh, let's call it IOF, short for integer or float. I create it in a similar way to how I would create a struct. So I would say int or float, and then I would define only one of those values. So I would either define the i, which is an integer value, or f, which is the floating point value. You would never define both of them. So I can define i being equal to 123. So that's my union. Now, if I want to modify the union, this is an unsafe operation. And the reason why it's unsafe is because nobody's really checking whether you are writing the correct data type to a particular field of this union. So essentially, if you want to assign an integer value, for example, you would have to do it using unsafe. So wrap everything with unsafe. And here I can say IOF dot i is equal to 42, for example. So this is how you would assign a value. And similarly, if you want to actually get a value, that's also an unsafe operation because nobody knows if the value is of the correct type. So if I want to get the value, I can say let value equals, and then once again, uh, put the unsafe block. And here I can say iof dot i to actually get the integer value from uh, this union that I've made. Now, when you're processing unions, you can enjoy the benefits of pattern matching, provided, of course, you are using uh, an unsafe block once again. So if I want to have a function which processes uh, a value of type int or float, IOF int or float, what I can do is I can write the following. I can say that uh, here is my unsafe context. So everything goes in an unsafe block here. And inside I can match IOF and I can match it against possible values. So for example, I can say, well, if I get an integer and that integer has the exact value 42, then we can do one thing. So I can say int or float where uh, the integer has the value 42. And in this case, I can maybe uh, print line that it's the meaning of life. So meaning of life like so. Uh, alternatively, if this is the case, what I can do is I can uh, get the float value. So I can say int or float and here I could put the f instead of the i. So f would now refer to the floating point value of the union and here I can print line its actual value. So I can say print line and I can say f32 equals and put in the actual value uh, which is f. So this is how you would typically access the value inside uh, this kind of pattern statement. And now what I can do is I can uh, call this function process value with different arguments. So I can call process value with IOF, which we know is an integral value with uh, the value 42 because that's what we've assigned here. We've assigned it to 42 here. So what's going to happen is this check will fire first. It will look at the value, at the integral value. It's going to say, yeah, that matches 42. Therefore, we're going to print this part. And let's take a look at how we can process a different value. So process value where we have int or float with a floating point value. So I'm going to say f equals to 1.23, for example. So what I can do is I can compile this example. So let's go ahead 
and let's actually build this whole thing and then we get to run it and see the output. Okay, so let's run the whole thing. And as you can see, for the first case, for the case where I'm passing in 42, I'm getting meaning of life. And for the second case, I'm outputting the actual value. So this is something that's probably not going to be used too much unless you are deep in systems programming and you want to save up on memory, for example, or you're interoperating with some sort of C or C++ API where unions are used already, in which case this is just another tool for your tool belt so that you can do those things now as well.